got to be set free, set apart. Born again, Holy Ghost filled. I don't live in habitual sin. I don't go smoke weed, sleep around, out of marriage. Smoke weed, do drugs. Do drugs, no. Speaking on behalf of the King of Kings, you get twisted. Understand that? Who's the King of Kings? There is, you know. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ brother. Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ, brother. Hallelujah. That's right. Highly recommend you check your oil every week, once a week. All right, don't play games, man. Well, don't take a risk. If you do, if you do not check that oil, you will be paying thousands. Versus $19.99. Which one you want to pay? $19.99 for five quarts oil, or you want to pay two grand to three grand for an engine? Your choice, man. Just like with the gospel, you want to risk your soul. You want to risk playing games with your soul? You got a choice, man. You know what I'm saying? You got a choice. You either choose God or you choose the world. You either choose God or you choose to live by your pride. Choose wisely, man. Look at that. That's the knocking you heard right there. That's what you call rod knock. Okay, now we got it at top dead center. All right, now watch. See that? No good right there. Now let's go back on the bottom. And I'm gonna show you what's happening. Let's bring that piston, this one right here, number one. Let's bring it back down to bottom dead center now. All right, right there, right about there, the bottom dead center. Now watch this. Look at that. Bad right there, bad shape. This connecting rod is done. This bearing is completely out. This bearing is completely gone. It just disintegrated, man. You're gonna wanna watch it if you wanna save money. If you don't have money, if you're broke, okay? Cause this job right here, you're talking thousands right here, all right? They're either gonna rebuild your engine or get you another engine. And you're talking over a grand right there for most shops. All right, so stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how to smash on this. I know what some of you guys are thinking. You're thinking, how in the world is he gonna fix this on a budget? There ain't no way he can fix this on a budget. Watch me. We're gonna go back to the old school, and do it the way the old schoolers did it. Some of you might not like it, but for the rest of us DIYers, we don't care, man. All right, because that's what we do. We smash on this stuff, man. This is DIY for the backyard mechanic who ain't afraid and who is fearless. If you can't do this, if you don't like what I'm doing, turn the channel. Go to the next one, man. It's simple as that. I ain't forcing you to do this stuff. But if you do like it, and stay hungry, man. Stay with me, stay hungry, and get ready to smash, all right? All right, now let's take off the connecting rod. And these right here, just hit it loose. Get a mallet and just whack it. All right, just hit it that way. Don't freak out on this stuff, ladies and gents. All right, don't let this stuff scare you. But stay on point and keep everything in order, all right? Keep everything in order. Whatever you remove, be organized. Very well organized. Yeah, make sure you mark your connecting rod. That way you know exactly what side it goes on, okay? You gotta put this back exactly the way you take it off, all right? Take pictures, put a mark on it, it doesn't matter. Do something to let you know what side it goes on. There we go right there. So now I'm gonna inspect this uh, connecting rod. Now, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to sand all this in here. 
and get all the rough spots down. So this is what you need. You need the bearings, WD-40, assembly loop, carb cleaner, and 400, 600 grit sandpaper, and wet and dry sandpaper. See that line there? I'm gonna cut it down, that line right there. That is the width of the journal right there. This is what a normal bearing looks like, right? This is the old one here. All right, see how thin that is? That just got beat up and wore down big time. All right, this was spinning. All right, you can tell by the marks going in that direction like that. Okay, we're gonna clean the connecting rod cap with the sandpaper. Okay, I'm using 800 grit just to knock off the, uh, the rough texture so we can get it smooth again. But on yours, if your bearing was still in there, then uh, use a 400 to a 600 grit, okay? And just run through it real quick like that. Yeah. And that should be good enough right there. So we're gonna use this. Carburetor cleaner, and then use a clean rag. Clean that up like that. All right. Feels a lot better than before. All right, so now these bearings are clean. Put the tang, you line up the tang right there. It's gonna snap it in like this. All right. Push it down until it's even on both sides. And that's your bearing right there. That's how it's supposed to look. Not supposed to look like that. So now let's go to the car. So we're gonna put all these bearings on the connecting rod journals and then uh, be done deal right there. Let's look at this here. Clean this. Damage there big time. Lack of oil. Yeah, this engine's on its way out, so. Yeah, since we know this engine's on its way out, this crankshaft is no good, man. We're just gonna throw bearings in there and just call it good and see. How this is a clear indication of poor oil maintenance right here, big time. This here, this connecting rod journal is supposed to ride on a thin layer of oil on this bearing, okay? Clearly, you can feel the uh, scratch pattern in here, all right? which tells me we were just getting metal to metal contact. So I'm just gonna uh, polish these journals, all the journals. We're gonna throw new caps. We're gonna throw new bearings in there. And then that's a done deal for this engine. All right, and we're gonna ride it till the wheels fall off. Let's handle it. If you got $2,000 to repair your engine, go do it. But if you wanna do this for less than 100 bucks and get back on the road, then handle it. If you live in a third world country, Africa, Asia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Sri Lanka. If you're broke, this is another option for you, all right? This is for the broke folks, man. But if you're rich and you got money, then this ain't for you, all right? This is for the financially challenged, for the people who lost their jobs. I'm showing you how to get right back on the road and get back in the mix. So cut the sandpaper, same width as a journal, all right? And you're gonna wrap it around like that, okay, until you get it around, all right? It's gonna be like that, but you're gonna have this wet with, with WD-40, all right? You're doing the wet sand on this. So then after you get it wrapped like that, you're gonna put the shoestring on it, all right? And let me show you how it's done, ready? What you do right there, man. Make sure the, sh the shoestring is make sure the shoestring is spread out on both sides. So when you're moving the shoelace, it'll spread out equally throughout the entire uh, journal. All right, like that. That's how you do it right there, man. Take it off. Hit it. Make sure you lubricate it with WD-40.
And then after you sand it, and after you polish it, clean it up. You're not gonna get it perfect, but at least this is better than the way it was before. Also, we're gonna pull the connecting rod down and sand the inside right there too, just until we get a smooth finish. Then we're gonna put the bearings on. I gotta do a little bit more work on this one, and that's why I started with that one first. This is just to show you guys, but that's the exact process we're gonna do to this one, and then that one, and then that one. Okay, once you get this connecting rod cap off, and this one off, move the crankshaft, all right? Move it out of the way so you can work on those, all right? But don't pull these down, all right? Because if you go too far, that piston up there can slide all the way down. Then the piston rings will come out of the board and you don't want that. Because if you do that, then you gotta take the cylinder head off and go all the way from the top and that's just gonna take hours, man. So move the crankshaft to the side, that way you can get after it a lot easier. And do two at a time. You see this hole here? And this hole here? That's oil passages. All right, so what you gotta do is you gotta run air through it, okay? Like this, watch. That matters big time, man, because you're clearing up all the passages and making sure that none of it's blocked. So after you get the bearings in, you're gonna put engine assembly loop on the bearing first. Just like that, okay? Put some on my finger, just rub it up in there. And just go off and put a lock. Until you got it soaked on there like that. So this is what you do. You're gonna push it down on the crankshaft journal, like this. See like that? Look at that. Brand new bearing right there. Okay, so now, now let's put this. Keep in mind the way it was at first, all right? Make sure everything is cooked. Let's just get that started. It's good to go. Get that one. So then all you do now is just torque it down, all right? So just torque this down. That's a wrap. Now we move on to this one. Okay, I just torqued this one down. This one is uh, 14 to 15 pounds with an additional 90 degree turn. So number four cylinder right here is done. So now we move on over here. Remember, put the WD-40 in there and just go off on it. Before you install them, put the assembly loop. You always gotta put this stuff on whenever you're uh, rebuilding an engine. That way on startup, this is a little bit thicker than oil, and uh, just get it, it works great. Look at the difference. Big time difference, huh? Now time to put the bearings on. All right, get that in there like that. Get it in the tang area. And just roll it right in like that. It'll fall right in place. Okay, just like that. So now we take this up, push up the piston until we can get it around the uh, crankshaft journal. Just like that. Now pull the connecting rod down, like that. Put that on the journal, okay? This is lubed up right here. Now we're gonna put the cap on. This is the connecting rod cap I just showed you, see? Instead of that way, it goes this way like that. But to make it convenient, let's bring this down. So now all you do is put the connecting rod on, just like that. Then you're gonna put the bolts on and torque them down. And it's that simple. This is how you save money until you can build up enough money to get a new engine because this engine is days are numbered. But that's what you do if you don't have money for now. Just handle it. Okay, everything is torqued down and we're good to go. We got all 
the bearings changed, the connecting rod bearings. All right. And so, now take a look at this. Remember how there was movement? The lesser the clearance, the better. But you can't have it too tight. Okay, inside here, there are crankshaft main bearings. All right. I'm not changing those because you have to take all this off right here. And since this crankshaft is already ruined, it's pretty much damaged and done, I'm not doing all that. So what we're doing is we're just trying to prolong the life of this engine for another six months to a year, and then I'm gonna put another engine in this car, all right? But we're gonna ride this thing until this thing falls apart, until this rod comes bursting out the side of the block. No big deal because we already have another engine for this car, straight up, and that's how you fix it. All right, that's how you save money, and that's how you fix the deal right there. All right, don't overthink it. Don't be afraid of this stuff. And don't freak out, man. There you go right there. No more rod knock right there. So I'm gonna clean the gasket material up, put the oil pan on, and then we're gonna start it up. That's a done deal right there. Yes, I have plastic gauge and I could have checked the oil clearances on these, but I didn't want to because we don't need to. But the fact that the uh, the crankshaft journal, the connecting rod journal is not, they're not fully polished and smooth. It defeats the purpose of me even checking it because I know that it's no good. So that's why I didn't even bother to check the oil clearance with the plastic gauge. This is for people that are on a budget. So I don't want to hear no crying or complaining or whining. Don't bring that noise over here. If you don't like what you see, if you don't like what I'm saying, especially when I talk about Jesus, man, then carry on. I ain't forcing you to watch this video right here. I ain't forcing nobody to watch this video. All I'm doing is I'm helping the common man, the broke folk. So don't sit there and start whining, man, when you watch me do this kind of stuff. Because this stuff, works. It's a proven system that works. And this is what happened. Show right here. All right. Let me, let me draw uh, a little diagram for you guys. Okay, this is the surface right here. You say it's metal. Right. Metal surface right here. If you put oil, if you put some oil right here, on that surface, there's gonna be a thin layer of oil on top of it, okay? And if you put a block, another metal block, if you put another metal block on top of that and you push it that way, it'll slide easy, right? Okay, either way, you can go either way, right? That way or that way. What this oil layer here is called is a cushion of oil. It's a cushion. I think that's how you spell it. Okay, there's a cushion of oil on top of here. That's this here, okay? Now watch this. Okay, this is the surface right there. We got oil on it, right? So we got oil right there. Now there's a cushion of oil on this bearing here. So now let's put a cushion of oil on this. Let's just say this is number one um, connecting rod uh, journal on the crankshaft. Okay, now there's a cushion of oil on that. So now this can ride easy and bend this out. These bearings are not for this crankshaft. But now this, now this, can flow easy between the surface of this journal and the surface of this because we placed a cushion of oil between there. So now it could now it could flow smoothly. Easily. Alright, so now we pull that off. So what happened here? Here's this here's another surface. Ready? The mechanical internal parts of the engine went dry there was no more oil so no oil no oil meant friction okay how do we get the friction 
all this was completely dried up. Just very minimal amounts of oil. There's no longer a cushion. And so we couldn't slide. And since we didn't have a cushion there, that meant that this metal block and this metal here was touching. Okay? Because there was no longer a cushion. And so once you get it touching, what does that mean? It means it gets hot. All this right here, metal to metal, gets hot, extremely hot. Okay? And once it gets hot, what happens when it gets hot? Since this material is not as strong as this here, it just gets the metal to metal contact creates friction and then it creates extreme heat and then it starts to melt the bearing, all right? Because this is spinning. This is continuously spinning and going up and down, you know, fast, thousands of revolutions per minute. And since this engine was lacking oil, we were making contact metal to metal when there should have been a thin layer, a thin cushion of oil between the metal surfaces, which is this and the bearing and this right here. All right, but we didn't have that in this engine. How do you know? It shows all over the engine. Check it out. You can see it all in here. Look at this. See the bearing? Now, now, let's go to this bearing. Show them this one. See this bearing? This was one of the bearings that was on the uh, crankshaft, the connected rod journal, all right, on the car. This is not the same crankshaft. This is a different one. Okay, so this bearing got chewed up, ate up. This and the other one, because there's two bearings per journal. Okay, and they go just like this. All right. So as the friction occurred and it started getting hotter and hotter, it started slowly peeling off layer after layer of the, uh, the bearing. Okay, and this is what happened. You see that? This is a normal bearing, but it's not normal no more, but it's tore up. But this is how it was supposed to look. But it was supposed to look like this, shiny, all right, and smooth. But instead, we got roughness in there. There's dirt and debris, and there's, there's, this is signs of overheating. This is signs of friction right there, big time, all right? And this is a result of that. In other words, the life expectancy of this engine is real short. It'll probably last for six months, a year, maybe hopefully more, I don't know. So what I did is I put brand new bearings in there, okay? They're standard bearings. Standard means that I put the bearings that the manufacturer put in when they first built the engine, all right? We went straight right back, we went right back to the standard size. Instead of oversizing it, we went right back to the standard size, okay? Because we have a lot of wear on the, uh, the journal, so the connecting rods, journals, and we know that there's no hope for it. Okay? The only way to fix that is to go take it to the machine shop and get it all done. All right, but we're not doing all that. We're doing this on a budget, and I'm showing you guys how to do it. You good? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. okay, check this out. This, this is like gritty sand, but worse because it has metal. Okay? This is getting all over the uh, piston rings. All, it's all up in the oil, right? Here's the cylinder bore, okay? This is going up and down like that, right? The bore is getting really glazed. That means it, it's, it's, uh, that means that the, the rings have expanded the bore bigger. You know what I'm saying? And it's made it shiny, real glossy, to where oil just seeps right through there, creating a lot of blow by and burning a lot of oil. And that's what you get when you have this issue, when you got a lot of stuff on the oil. You hear that knocking? Just like that knocking, that's what God does to your heart. He's knocking on your door, man. Knocking on your door, asking, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest, man, straight up. And he's knocking on your door too, straight up. He's knocking on your door. Don't forget that. This ain't a game, this ain't a joke. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, now, here we go. It's the moment of truth. All right, everything is back together now. Got the oil pan on, 
brand new filter. Now we're ready to start it. Here we go. Here's all the bearings that were in there. Okay? We got the bearings from number four, three, two, and one. This is what was left over in one. So now, the moment of truth. All right? I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna show you how to fix your car or on a budget, okay? If you can't afford this, if you can't afford a $1,000 engine, or $2,000 engine, a $3,000 engine, do this trick. You got nothing to lose, man, because your engine is on its way out. But the question is, is how long? See, that's the question nobody knows. It depends on how much wear is in your engine. But after further diagnosis in this engine, I know this engine's on its way out, all right? Because look at the bearings. This tells the whole story right here. So my engine and my car, this thing is done. All right, but I'm gonna try to make it last for another year. You know what I'm saying? By this little trick I just showed you guys. Okay, so so now it's time to start it. Okay, I didn't start it. I didn't start this at all. This is gonna be the very first startup. As you guys know, I do everything fresh. I don't change nothing. I don't set nothing up. Everything is fresh the way I do it and the way you see it. All right, here we go. Time to start it up. tell you guys look at that that is how connecting rod number one was just like that we had big time rod knock look now nothing no rod knock at all that's how you fix it man straight up look at this here These are all the bearings, man. We replaced every single bearing, every rod bearing in this car, all right? We didn't change the main bearings because that was too much. Because this engine is on its way out and we're just gonna ride it till this thing falls apart, man. That's simple as that. And that's how you do it, though. That's how you get rid of rod knock and it's that simple, okay? I understand for a lot of you, it may, it may not be that simple, but that's what it is, man, okay? And that's how you get rid of rod knock. Some people think it's not possible. Look what we just did, man. It's simple, man, okay? How much, was, now, how much was all, the, now, how much were all the bearings? These were 30 bucks. I got them from my local machine shop that I always go to, one of the ones. I go to a couple of them. But they gave me all four rod bearings, well, eight, for 30 bucks. So all together, this job was under 50 bucks because I had to pay six bucks for the silicone. And that's what it is right there, man. No rod knock at all. Don't worry about that noise. There's a hole in the exhaust. Don't worry about that, no big deal. That's what it is right there. That's how you defeat rod knock. That's how you smash on this stuff. So in Jesus, mighty, holy, precious name, man, stay bold, stay committed. Don't ever back down. Don't give up for nothing. Don't let nobody move you. Don't let nothing move you. In his holy name, keep on smashing on it. Amen. Now that we're done with the rod knock, and now that you understand that when you deprive your engine of oil, things can go real bad. Have you seen how everything was just... There was metal up in the engine. There was flakes everywhere. There was pieces of a bearing all inside the oil pan. And you've seen the destruction of what happens when you don't lubricate your engine or when you leave it dirty, when you let it stay dirty, when you never change your oil. What you've seen can also happen from really, really bad, dirty oil. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna use that as an analogy for you starving your spirit spiritually starved there's a way you can starve your spirit i'm going to explain it right now okay when god created you 
when God created all of us, he made us with three parts. Check this out. There's the body, there's the soul, and there's the spirit. This is the three parts that man is made up of. All right? It's in this book. It's in the Holy Bible. The body is the flesh. The soul is the emotions. The mind and your will. Now the spirit is the wisdom, communion, conscience. That's your conscience right there. Spell that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The flesh. The Bible says the flesh wars against the spirit. All right. Don't mind that. There's a game right now. There's a game going on and they're, and they're watching it right now. The body wars with the spirit continuously, constantly, all the time. What you got to do is you got to put the body under submission. But you can't do that if you don't have the spirit right. Okay? How do you get the spirit right? You got to get this spirit, your spirit, you got to get your spirit lined up with God. Jesus Christ. Not any God. Because there are false gods. Anything other than Jesus Christ, that's a false god. You got to get your spirit lined up with Jesus Christ. Check this out. If you don't ever talk to God, you don't have communion with God. You don't, you, you don't receive the wisdom of God. Inside your conscience, you ain't going to respect the laws of God. Okay? Your soul, your emotions, we all know what that is. Your mind, that's your brain, it's going in your brain, and your will. will. You have free will to do what you please, okay? Like you can turn this channel off anytime you want. Or you can listen and hear what I'm about to say that's in here. I'm not making none of this up, okay? When I give you the word, I don't make stuff up. I don't guess. I don't ever assume. I get everything from the book, from the word of God. So your will, that's your free will right there. Okay? Your flesh, that's your desires right there. That's the lust. That's your, uh, when you get tempted and you fall, your, your, your body wants to. Your, your flesh wants to, to do that. Your flesh wants to fall. Your flesh does not want to be in communion with God at all. It does not want to receive anything from the Spirit. So what goes on is this. As we grow up, we're not ever feeding the spirit because we're not talking to God. You think you are. Sometimes you're talking to a God, a false God. Keep that in mind. But all that is, is a false. Let me put a little G right there. False God. Right there. Whether you're dealing with yoga, Allah, Buddha, many other gods. Baal, there's no Baal in there. We'll get to that in another video. There's many other false gods you can replace God with. The one and only God of the Bible. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't get it twisted. Okay, so here's what goes down. All right? Let me give you a verse to tell you what's wrong with this area right here. So when you're not talking to the Lord, you are starving your spirit. You're not receiving any understanding from God. What you're doing when you're starving, this right right here. You're starving your spirit. When you're starving your spirit, you receive no word or wisdom or understanding. Sorry for my sloppy writing. From Jesus, all right? When you're not reading this, you are operating in this area, right here, right here. This is no Bible, no communion with God, God of the Holy Bible. 
when you're operating in this area, you are operating in the body and the soul, okay? What you have fed inside your body, inside your mind, that's exactly what you become. Whether you become an atheist or an agnostic or an occultic person or a new agent, you know? Or whether or not you want to keep rebelling against God. So let's get to the body right now. We go to Matthew 26, 41. Check this out. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, let's go over here. The spirit wants to be in communion with God, but the flesh does not want anything to do with God. Your flesh wants to stay in rebellion against God. Okay? So, you understand that verse right there? That's Matthew 26, 41. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. Now, if you're feeding this flesh, whatever, it could be anything. So now this is what happens. If you feed the flesh, uh, you can feed it whatever you want, man. This is porno, pornography. This just list a few things here. Gambling. Uh, even cursing. If you curse a lot, cursing, lying, what's that? L I E? L Y I N G. Cheating. Stealing. Stealing. Drinking. Drinking. Oh, yeah. That's what my problem was right there. Fighting. Drinking. Fighting. That would be anger. Okay? Uh, there's a lot more, man. Let's put meth in here. That I grew up on this stuff. Meth. Cocaine. Weed. Weed. You hear me? Weed. Yes, I said weed. I ain't smiling. I ain't laughing. Weed is right here. Stay tuned. Let's, let's make this big. For all you hardheads, man. Weed. Straight up. Yes, I said weed. Okay? There's a lot more, man. This one right here. We're going after that right there. This contributes to all this right here. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Okay, James 115. Here we go right here. Check this out. Read this. Get your Bible and read this. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You guys get that? Look at this right here. What we just put. Lust of the flesh. So you can't sit there and blame God and say, oh, God's throwing this at me. God don't tempt you with evil. It's in here. You can't sit there and make excuses and start saying that, man, I don't know, man. It's, just, it's not me. It's, it's that other cat. It's my friend. It's my daddy. It's my auntie, my uncle. Or it's my wife. Or it's my husband. You can't use that, man. That's an excuse. Read it again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed so you it's your problem it's your fault when you feed this flesh when you're operating in this area only you are going to feed it what it wants and when you feed it what it wants you're going to fall into this bracket right here then when lust hath conceived and when you and when you do the action when you watch the porno on your tv or your phone or whatever, whatever your device, man. Whatever your, whatever. Because it's so easy to watch that stuff. So when you fall into that, then when lust hath conceived, you're conceiving it, right? You're gambling, you're cursing, you're lying, stealing, the cocaine, the meth, the weed. So when you start getting involved with it, you're conceiving it, right? And when you conceive it, it bringeth forth sin. It becomes sin, right? And when sin, and sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. There you go. That's the problem right there. It's this right here. The problem is right there. The problem is in the soul that you created, that you conditioned. 
you condition this thing to go ahead and abide in all this or any one of these. You create that. Not God, not your mama, not your daddy, not your wife, not your husband. You did this. And this also, this is where racism is. This is where hate is at. This is where hate is created, right here. Is God about hate? Not at all. You guys know that. Everybody knows that. God ain't about hate, but you shut them out, right? So you're starting to take advice from who? People who hate people, all right? They hate white, black, Asian, uh, Mexicans. Don't matter, man. Hate is hate. God is not about hate, and you guys know that. You know it in your heart. And then there's got this right here. This is the law. This is the moral law, okay? Where does this moral law come from? That comes from God. Where is that at? That's in here, okay? Where is it at also? It's written in your heart. Let's go to the verse. So now, you want to hear about the law written in your heart? God put it in your heart. Here's proof. Hone in on this. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves which show the work of the law written in their hearts one more time law the law written in their hearts the law written in their hearts the conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another okay Let's just stick with that. The law is written in your heart, straight up. So, many people walk around talking about there is no such thing as a moral absolute. They're, they're talking about there is no such thing as a moral law that works for everybody. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The moral absolute is right here. But when you shut off the word of God, the spirit of God, and you close it up like that, you're going to say there's no such thing as a moral law because you are trying to justify how you want to live based on your own emotions in your mind in your will you have conditioned yourself to exclude and to disregard anything in the book you might borrow pieces bits and pieces to make it sound good or, or make you feel good but the moral law is not in your heart because you have not because you have not given your heart to God. You have not, you have not been in communion with God. So you're gonna say that, let's talk about the homosexual agenda. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it up, straight up. You're gonna say that God is love, right? This is put it here, God is love, right? That old new age stuff, right? Yes, he is, but check this out. And, and a lot of people will say, God loves everybody. God, it doesn't matter if you're a homosexual. It doesn't matter if you're gay. God still loves you. Yes, he does love you. But here's the problem. There's a law. The law says that man shall not sleep with man. Let's go there. And anyways, that's called man's wisdom, not God's wisdom. Now, you got man's wisdom and God's wisdom. This is your wisdom. Those of you who says God is love and he accepts everybody, especially people like Oprah, who says everybody's going to heaven. No, they ain't. That's called pluralism. That's another lie. We're gonna cover that in another video. Anyways, here we go. Here we go. You ready? You trying to tell the homosexuals that it's okay? This is the problem, all right? Read this right here. Go get your Bible, Leviticus 18.22. Thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Let's go uh, another one. Where's the other one at? Read this too. Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind, look at that, man with man, okay? Don't get it twisted. Stay with me. As he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Now, what you just did, when you told that homosexual that God is love, God loves you no matter how you are, you can be together, man with man, woman with woman, it's all right. You made that up. Or you got that from somebody else, all right? And you got deceived. So in your soul, you stuck with that emotion. 
because it made you feel better. You understand what I'm saying? It made you feel better because you want to be a loving person to everybody. So do I. But you don't want to go outside the moral laws. Because once you're outside of that, it becomes sin. But in this case, if you want to talk about homosexuality, it becomes an abomination. What's an abomination? An abomination is something that makes God sick. It's gross. It's, it's, it's a serious sin. Put it that way. Okay? So you go around talking about God is love. He loves everybody. He ain't going to kill nobody because of this and that. You better read that Bible. Because you're preaching heresy. And you might be an apostate. You're drifting away from the truth. Okay? Yes. But God does love them. But God hates. Let's put it right here, man. God hates the sin. Because the sin separates you from him. This separates you from God. All right? Because if you're over here, messing around over here, you ain't talking to God. If, and if you are talking to God and you're still doing stuff over here, that means you're half-stepping. You know what I'm saying? You're half-hearted. Let's put it right here. It means you're half-hearted. Uh, I'll just put it You're a half-hearted Christian. And you know what that also means? You're right here and you are right in the middle. You're lukewarm. Straight up. Lukewarm Christian. What does God say? He says, I will spew you out of my mouth. Yeah, I know my writing's sloppy. So what? You guys get it? You want to be right here trying to have one foot in and one foot out? You're lukewarm, man. You're playing games. I keep telling you guys, this ain't no joke. You see me laughing about this. The reason why is because I'm serious about this. And I don't want to see nobody go to hell, but unfortunately, many, many, many people are going to go to hell because of this. This is the problem. The problem is right here. Because you're corrupting your soul. You're distorting the word of God. You're twisting things up. You're not reading the word. If you're not reading the word, you're not getting nothing. You're not getting no wisdom, no understanding, no communion with God. And your conscience has been, the Bible calls it, seared. Okay? Because you'd rather be here because I understand this is fun. Sin is fun. But sin, check this out, last for a season. This ain't gonna last, man. The word of God lasts, this is forever. This ain't gonna last forever. All you guys smoking weed, you are smoking weed and you're sitting here telling me, after I made that video about weed, I'm gonna make another one, I'm gonna hit you guys harder. You guys trying to tell me that weed is okay? Weed is a psychoactive drug that alters your mind. Yes, weed alters your mind. Weed opens up doors to the demonic realm. Any one of these, you're dealing with demons. Yeah, I know you don't want to hear that. I'm gonna tell you the truth straight up. You're dealing with demons. Pornography, uh-huh, you better, you better believe it. Lust of the flesh, you're dealing with demons. Gambling, you know, you got some kind of addiction, you're straight dealing with demons. When you open them doors up like that, you are straight dealing with demons. And if them demons can influence you to do bad, to do sin, and then you fall for it, remember lust of the flesh, when you get enticed, and you fall for it, it starts to get conceived, then you start getting grimy. You know what I'm saying? Then you fall into this bracket right here. You have just fell for the okie doke. And that's exactly where the devil wants you, in the web. This is a web right here. This is a big spider web that will get you caught up. Now, forget all this junk, man. Now, let's check this out. See how messy this is, by the way? Look how, look how chaotic this is. The, the, the devil, one of the devil's titles is called the, he's the author of confusion. He's the father of what? Some of you guys know, father of what? Father of lies. All this is a lie. Temporary, especially weed. Any, any of this is, not just weed. This is a lie right here. It's all temporary gratification. It's sensationalism. It's, uh, what else is it? It's just, it's deception, man. 
We have been bombarded with this. You turn the TV on right now, you will see all this junk that is against Christ, that is against the moral laws of Christ. They tell you to just do it without thinking. No thinking, just do it. You just do it, you end up in it. You get caught up in it. Just what Frank Sinatra say, I did it my way. Uh-huh, did it his way. All this, Hollywood, Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Same with all these cats, man, today. Look how chaotic this is, man. These pistons are definitely gonna get destroyed because they're being starved, man. You're starving the spirit so everything else gets all out of whack. So you think these are gonna fail? Definitely. You think your life's gonna fail? In time. Sin lasts for a season. You go to the black communities. Guess who our leaders are? Drake, Kodak Black, Waka Flocka, Gucci Man, 3-6 Mafia, Young Buck, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre. Oh, man, there's so many cats. I grew up on all that junk, man. Except for the new, new cats. All, all that old school rap, I grew up on all that junk, man. Yeah. I was feeding my soul all that crap. I said crap. All that music, all that rap music out there is crap. You don't see these guys in the morgues. You don't see them getting shot. They tell you go out there, gang bang, shoot cats up, take one for the, for the hood, bang your set, stay strapped, degrade women, talking all that junk, man. Feeding, feeding the community all that junk. What you think's going in the souls of these youth? Huh? What you think's going in their souls? You think they're gonna fulfill that? Of course. That's why you got a lot of youngsters dying. You know what I'm saying? You got youngsters in the hood dying because of these cats that I just mentioned, many other cats too, man, who don't have, because these cats who they follow, their souls are not right. So they put out stuff like that. They put this music out. And so when their souls are not right, they're feeding it to the youth. When they feed it to the youth, the youth take action and they conceive it. They put it out there. So they're the ones who get blasted, get caught up, get diseases, get pregnant. All these hoochie songs and stuff. You understand how it works now? Yeah, I'm mad, man. I can't stand that junk. That stuff polluted me. Let me show you how to fix it. James 1-5. Here we go right here. If any man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. You gotta ask, man. Let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. That's free. They say nothing in life is free. That's a lie from the pit. You go to Christ right now, he will free you up from all this junk. You understand that? That's free, all right? The grace of God is free. The mercy of God is free. You don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. None of us deserve his grace and mercy, but it's free. Let's go back to this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. It shall, and it shall be given him. Right there. That's how you fix it. Okay, this is John 4, 24. Read this. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. One more time. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. Spirit, spirit. Okay? Your spirit. Now let's go back to the spirit. Your spirit. Right here. God's spirit. All right? Your spirit must be in communion with God. That's what that's saying. When you pray and you talk to God and you fast, you do it in communion with God. Okay, and when you praise him, what does it say? And when you worship him, you gotta worship him in spirit. There are churches that are worshiping a God on this side, but there's no spirit. You understand that? That's a false conversion. That's a false church right there. Okay, like many mega churches. We used to go to a mega church. I ain't gonna say no names. They was right here, put it that way. Seemed like they was over here sometimes, but a lot of times it was right here. You got people who, oh, man, I don't even want to go there. Anyway, when you commune with God, you start, you, you tell the Lord, and how you do this first, you got to repent first, okay? You can't just come to the Lord all filthy like that. 
You know what I'm saying? You got to confess all these sins over here. Whatever you've been doing wrong, you got to bring it to the Lord. And you got to say, Lord, I don't want this no more. I want to be done with this. This is breaking me. This is destroying my life. I have lost so much. I'm sick of this, Lord. I don't want to die in sin. You know? And that's that, that part he put in you. You know what I'm saying? The, the law. For you to know. But, but when he put the law on you, you can distort the law. You know what I'm saying? And the law can be darkened in your heart. So you won't want to hear from the spirit. So you start, you'll stay on this side for, for years. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years before you even come to this side. Sometimes you won't even make it. You don't know when you're going to die because tomorrow ain't promised, like I told you in the last video. But let's go back to the spirit. So when you, you're in communion with God, you start to receive revelation, instruction, counsel, understanding, and wisdom. Because you're in communion with God. And that law that he put in your heart, you start to abide by it. You start to start, you start looking at the law and be like, okay. So thou shalt not lie. So over here you was okay with a little bit of lie. But now, let's go back over here. But now that you're over here in Christ, you're gonna be like, when you start to lie, if you lie, God's gonna be like, uh-uh. Because now you can hear the voice of God. And before over here, you couldn't hear the Lord. Because you weren't you were in darkness. And God don't operate like that. So your free will, where's it at? Your will, you chose to say, you know what, God, I'm gonna roll over here. I don't really need you right now. So God was like, okay, but I love you. Nah, God, not right now. I ain't got time for that. You'll be yoked up with the devil. Yeah, the devil will keep you yoked. Straight up. That means in bondage. He'll have a stronghold on you. These are strongholds. Don't forget that. These are strongholds. Let's go back over here. I'm getting thrown off. So when you repent and you come to the Lord, God will come in your spirit. He'll abide in you and you in him. That's what the Bible says. Okay? And then God will start to give you ways to overcome this. Unless you want to stay on this side and this side, you can have one foot in, one foot out, then you'll be all screwed up. Then you'll be lukewarm. Remember that? But you don't want to be lukewarm. You either go all in or all out. What does God say? You're either hot for me or you're cold. There ain't no middle. Because if you're in the middle, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That's, you, know, you don't want to hear that. You don't want that being done to you. Anyways, that's how you fix all this, man. And once you fix this, once you're over here in Christ and you're praying, you're fasting, you, you submit your life to the Lord, you, you drag this body into submission. You know what I'm saying? You drag this body. You drag the soul. First you drag the soul, all right? Because the soul will filter, will start to filter things better. You know what I'm saying? Your spirit filters things but you, and your soul filter things also. And once you start filtering things through the soul, you you sub, you make the flesh submit to this. You can't fully control it all the time, but you, once you're in the spirit, once you operate under the Holy Spirit, like the Bible says, like Acts 2.38, like in Acts 2.38, it says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's God, God's spirit. Then it also says in Acts, you shall receive power. He will give you the power to overcome all this. Pornography, gambling, cursing, lying, cheating, stealing, drinking, fight, anger, fighting, uh, cocaine, meth, weed, lust of the flesh. There's, there's tons of this stuff. Many, many more of these. There's many more. But once you, once you receive the power in Christ, he'll give you the ability to overcome this. Straight up. That's how it works. Then your stuff won't get all broken and busted up. You know what I'm saying? Like that car we just showed. But if you want to stay over here, operate over here, and keep on this side, operating in the flesh, that's up to you, man. That's your choice. Because remember, one of the most precious things God has given you is free will. Remember, where we at? You make the decision.
like after you, like as you're watching this video right here, you have the choice to make now. Now you have, this is powerful, man. You have the ability to make the choice. You could either squander this information you're hearing right now, or you can go research it. You know what I'm saying? Don't just sit here and take my word. Get in the book. Ain't none of this right here made up for me. This is in the book. So you have the ability to go do your research, or you can sit on it and keep clowning around with your soul and keep playing games out there in the world. I guarantee you, pretty soon, and this is pride. All this is pride right here. This is pride. That's how Satan felt too. Remember that. All this is pride because you're putting all this before God. And once you put all this before God, it becomes your idol. Any one of these can become an idol. Doesn't matter what it is. Anything that you consume, anything that consumes you and keeps you and pulls you and draws you away from God is an idol. Remember that. So you have a choice to make. Do you want to be in bondage and all this? Or do you want to be set free? God says, come to me, all ye that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen to this verse. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Your heart wants to do wickedness when you feed it the lust of the flesh. That's why you have to bring it into submission to the Spirit of God. Once you bring it into submission, all this to the Spirit of God, then you can have it under more control. Now you know how this works. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. There's another one. It says, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. So, you put whatever you want in your heart. Okay, and once you put that, when you put filth in your heart, that's on you. All right, to get to this point, though, there's something you got to do, though. You got to repent, all right? Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Whose name? Not Allah, not Buddha, not Krishna, not all them other false gods. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's specific for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What's the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost will come to you in your spirit, all right? And you start to guide you and get you out of the funk that you're in, all right? This is what you got to do. Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You want to be saved, man. You don't want to play around with your soul, all right? Because when you die, you're going to stand before the Lord. And when you do, if you're caught up in this right here, you are in transgression against the Lord. You are going to stand before the Lord and you are going to die in sin. This is sin right here. You die in sin, that's on you, it's your choice. God has given everybody the ability to repent multiple times, not just three chances and you're out, multiple times. You're talking thousands of times. You know, how many times, it's like this video. You're gonna watch this, some of you are gonna blow it off. Some of you are gonna be like, hmm, you're gonna be laying down tonight and you're gonna hit that pillow and you're gonna be start to think. That's what I did. I remember one time I was drinking a 40 ounce, no, 40 ounces. I was drinking with, with the homies at the park and then um, I had a friend, his little cousin was a youngster, man. I don't know, she was like nine, 10, I don't know. She was at the park with her friends. And I was sipping 40 ounce, drinking, smoking, we was chilling, bumping the radio. And then she rolls up with her little friend, just her and her friend. Mm, I'm out drinking. And she says, she called my name out as I was drinking the 40 ounce. And she was like, you need Jesus. And I was like, boom. That hit me so hard, man. I'll never forget that day. That was just one of the many times that I got hit. Some of you are going to get hit like that right now. You know what I'm saying? Just just by seeing this jump. Not jump, but you know. But when she said that, she said, 
you need Jesus. Because her family used to go to church. And that just went boom. I took that home. I went home. I couldn't stop thinking about that for days. And I just kept, all I kept hearing, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. And I was like, man. But I still stayed in the streets. I, was, I didn't want to go to Jesus yet. I did because I was so caught up in the, in the flesh. I was like, nah, nah, not now. But I thought about it. And God kept hitting me time after time. I'll go over here, bam, Jesus, go over here, do you know God? This and that, blah, 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 back to back. It just kept happening. You know what God was doing? He was probing my heart. God was seeking me. He was knocking on my heart, on, my door, on the door of my heart. I think the Lord, he was knocking on my heart, man, because, man, it was only a matter of time before I became a victim, man. You know, a statistic of, of what, I was, what I was doing in the streets, man. You know, I got shot at, man. I, I've been in so many fights, man. I, man, I, I was in chaos, man. Everywhere I went, man, I was paranoid, man. And just causing problems, you know, and just hurting people. Getting banged up, coming home, all busted up, man, with knots on my head and stuff. I think the Lord, man, that he stepped in. But, you know, that's that's what the Lord does. Even though you shut him out, his grace, man. You guys heard that song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound, the song, how sweet the Lord is. His grace, his mercy, man. It's because the Lord will he'll, he'll, he'll still chase after you. No matter what, even in the midst of all this, this chaos and whatever the devil's got you caught up in, whatever bondage you're in, whatever stronghold he's got you in, God will pull you out. But he needs your consent. Let me put it right here. God needs your consent because he will not go against your free will. He promises to never, ever go against your free will. So you got to give him permission to operate in your life. That way he can start to show you that you don't have to be a victim. Even if you're a victim of abuse, he can free you. The person holding the camera right now, can I say it? The person holding the camera right now has been abused suffer from alcoholism almost died had suicidal thoughts was depressed she suffered from so much pain anxiety and turmoil man this is turmoil right here man all you gotta do is, is put it like that this is turmoil man you don't want to be there you don't have to chaos. be there chaos man i know you can't read it but that's what this is look what this does this only lasts for a season, man. God, God is going to probe your heart. And God's going to tell you, like in the Bible, how long will ye halt between two opinions? How long are you going to, you're going to sit here and debate on, should I go with God or should I stay over here? How long, man? You don't have to. But today she's free because she's been redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ from his grace through mercy. That's how we're saved. We're saved by faith, by grace, by faith through God's grace and his mercy, okay? The faith is, you know what? You're gonna take that leap of faith and go over here. I'm gonna go ahead and uncover this. And I'm gonna say, Lord, you know what? I'm gonna trust you because I'm broken. You come crying, it don't matter, man. You come here on your knees kneeling down to Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? On your face, bowing down. You come like that in reverence. Reverence means full respect to God, for God. You come in, in reverence and with sincerity, God will deliver you from this. He delivered me from this. He delivered her from this. He delivered heroin addicts cocaine addicts, homeless people, prostitutes. prostitutes. Man, there's so many people. And that's why we bring the gospel to you.
God will break these chains that are on you, man. It's a chain of bondage here. It's a web of destruction that you're caught up in. Get out of it before you die in sin. Receive Christ today in Jesus' name, man. Call on his Holy Spirit right now. You ask, when do we do it? When should you do it? Now, Bible says, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Because this is only going to get worse, you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, this is only going to get worse. And you guys already seen what's going on in the world today. You see the shootings, man, the death. The guy who just ran up in the church, what was that, at Texas? Mm -hmm. Ran up in that church and shot all those church folks. I know you guys are like, where's God at? Where's God at? Man, I don't have the answer to all that. I don't have the answers to everything. I don't know why the guy, I don't know why God doesn't stop the trigger when he shoots, when somebody gets shot. And sometimes he does. I don't know why an innocent baby dies sometimes. But the Bible says, my ways are higher than your ways. My, my ways are above your ways. In other words, quit trying to outthink God. You know, and, and quit overthinking this stuff. It's not that difficult. This is the simplicity of the gospel. Death, the death of Jesus Christ, the burial and resurrection. He died on the cross for your sins. I'm gonna close right now. Let me tell you this. Your spirit, it longs to serve God. God has built that in you. I have talked about this before. There's a void, okay? If you're not submitting or abiding in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, if you're not abiding in Christ or the Holy Spirit, you're gonna have this void, okay? You're gonna have this void in your heart, okay? You're gonna feel, let's get you back. You're gonna feel this with all kinds of junk. It's just, just one word, man. Oops, one word. Junk. You're gonna fill your heart with junk. Your soul's gonna be full of junk. And you're gonna continuously chase. Like some of you guys are still drinking after 30 years, 40 years. Um. The party's over, man. Remember that. You're gonna keep chasing that. You're never ever gonna get that same feeling you used to get back when you first started. Remember that? You're still chasing that. I know because I did that. Remember, I stopped in 2013. Done. Everything. When people hit me up, how you doing, man, blah, 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 whether it's strange or whatever, they'll be like, hey, let's go get a drink or something. I'll be like, oh, start, pump the brakes. Immediately, I tell them, oh, no, 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 no. I'm done with that junk. I don't drink that poison no more. I gave my life to Christ, I'm done. If you starve your spirit, you are going to be, one word, carnal, carnal, no, two words. You're gonna be carnal minded. Where's carnal minded? All this right here. And guess what? You're gonna have the blinders on. What are the blinders? That dark shield right there. See that? You know what this is? This is a welding mask. You're gonna have the dark shield on, just like this. Just like this. See that? That's how you're gonna see life, like that. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be over here operating right here. You're not gonna see clearly. You're gonna see through this dark, darkness like that. Bible says, for the God of this world has blinded them that believeth not. Satan got you blind, man. Snap out of it. Let's close this up. This is what you do. Let's do a, this is called the, uh, this is called the uh, sinner's prayer. This is what you do. I'm serious right now. I'm serious. Those of you who want to make the choice to change your life right now, let's do it. All right? Let go. Let this go. Let this junk go. Look at it. It's carnal minded. This is all carnal right now. This is pagan. This is outside the will of God. You're outside of the will of God right here. You're outside of it. To get in the will of God, you need to repent with sincerity in your heart. You need to repent and you need to be baptized. This is what you do. 
is what you say to Jesus Christ. You say, dear Lord Jesus Christ. Now close your eyes. The reason why I say close your eyes is because you want nothing on the outside to distract you. You hear me? Because if you got your eyes open, the kids is running around, you got the TV on and stuff, turn everything off and do this right. Okay? That's why they have altar calls at the, at the churches. Okay? You go to your knees. I would, especially if you're caught up in this stuff heavily. Hit your knees. Bow down to Jesus Christ. Imagine yourself in front of the throne of God Almighty. Just imagine yourself right there. You bow down and you say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for the transgressions that I've done against you. Please forgive me for everything that is corrupt in my heart. For everything that is defiled, that I have allowed, that I have allowed to defile my heart. All the hate, all the drugs, all the alcohol, Lord, I don't want it no more. Please forgive me. Please have mercy on me. Lord, let your mercy and grace be upon me right now. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, as my Father. And I ask you to please come into my heart and redeem me. Give me salvation, Lord Jesus Christ. I repent of all my sins and ask you to free me up from the bondage and the, of the, and the captivity and the chains that got me locked up, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray you help release the bondage on me, Lord. I can't take it no more, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you please have mercy on me, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus Christ, for all that I've done, all the pain and hurt that I've caused you. Please forgive me for my sins. In your holy name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen, amen, and amen. Remember, in Jesus' name only, there is no, under, there is no other name under heaven by which man can be saved, but by the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, love you guys, man. Stay solid. Amen.